All right, it's currently 10.33 on July 23rd. We're out here in Cannon Falls, and today I'm gonna to be doing a steady, fast, long run, probably starting between 6.15 and 6.30, and then maybe bringing it down or something like that. So let's do okay, it. Okay, it may not work today, it may not work tomorrow, but this is the right thing, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what's feeding me. That's so now just, just, just believe in what you're doing. And if, it's, and if you don't believe in it, then you're not doing it. You, you haven't figured out the thing that you do best. I've historically been fast for my age. I ran a 1723 5K in 7th grade, a 1649 in 8th, and a 1602 in 9th. And over those years, I rivaled the best runners my age. But this upcoming season is different. Previously, my focus has been almost completely on the kids in my grade. But as I move into sophomore year, I know I have the potential to start to win, or at the very least, place top 5 consistently. The purpose of this documentary is to follow my pursuit in reaching a new style of goals. So, what are these new goals? Well, goal number one, win one cross country meet. Goal number two, place top 10 at state. And finally, goal number three, run a 1525 5K. Over the next month, I ran 148 miles, and within those miles included numerous strong workouts indicating I was ready for cross country. We just had one of our best long runs in history. We went down to North Dakota and we ran in the Badlands for 12 miles, six flat pace. God bless. Okay, it was actually at Rice Creek, but yeah. But it still isn't quite time for my first race yet, because each year my coach takes mainly our varsity to a city in southern Minnesota. Here we train with two of our neighboring schools and play a lot of sports in between. Today is the day before I leave for the five day camp, so I'm just doing some meal prep and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey boys. Okay. Alright, say something to him, Brandon. Alright, welcome back to the vlog, guys. We just finished eating at Dell's Cafe. You know, we just finished up a six mile long, I mean, not long run, six mile, six mile run into town. Pretty hilly. But, you know, it was good. We relaxed. relax. And, you know, we're just gonna keep grinding out this week. We're gonna go yeah. play volleyball. Overall, Whitewater was really fun. I had nothing but good runs, and I'm proud of how I handled all the sports combined with the fast runs. And now that I'm back, it's already almost time for my team's first meet. However, I unfortunately contracted and tested positive for COVID the night after I came back. I experienced mild symptoms and had to miss practice leading up to my first meet, but was still able to run with some difficulty. And now before I get to my first race, I want to introduce you to four of my teammates. My name is Max Abramson. I'm a junior. My 5K PR is 19.20 right now. My goal is mid-17s. My name is Macy Young. I'm a senior. My 5K PR right now is a 17.55. I'm hoping to go sub-17.10. My name is Aaron Brown. I'm a junior. My 5K PR is 18.43, and I am shooting for mid to low 17. My name is Owen Zupasic. I'm a junior. My 5K PR is 18.02. My goal this year is at least get at least two seconds. 
Over the course of the season, I'll not only be following my journey, but I'll also be giving you updates on their progress as well. And now finally, I think it's time to get this season off to a strong start. All right, we're out here at Falcon Heights Community Park. <clears throat> and today I'm gonna be doing three by one mile with three minute jog rest at two mile goal pace. I was gonna have a really nice transition from that workout into my race on Friday, but I unfortunately had to cut the workout short. I feel like I was easily in the best shape I've ever been until COVID hit me, and it still isn't done with me yet. My heart rate is higher all the time, my legs are tired, and I feel like I've lost a little VO2 max. So right now, the plan is still to run on Friday, but not to put too harsh of expectations on myself. It'll be easier to get back to where I was than if I was starting from scratch, but it's still not gonna be easy. And I mean, hey, this documentary wouldn't be any fun without some setbacks. It'll just make my 1525 and my top 10 finish at state feel even better. I ultimately decided to be happy with that 1025 because I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to run leading into the meet. One thing I didn't mention though was that I was not the only one who got COVID at Whitewater. Four of my teammates also tested positive, one of them being Maceo, which meant he would not be running in the meet. As a result of having some runners out, Max and Aaron stepped up and ran on varsity for us. And while neither of them were too thrilled with either of their performances, we can still appreciate the fact that they stepped up ready to race. Owen was our fifth man, and while he wasn't too proud of his performance either, he did still help our team to a fourth place finish. At this point in the season, state isn't exactly four weeks, and I haven't even come close to breaking 16, and I'm miles away from 1525. But something that I think is extremely important as a runner is finding a way to keep your goals alive. I've continually justified those performances in my head, saying things like, I had a big workout and lift two days before Metro. Roy Grieg is a really tough course. But at some point, there's no more room for justifications, and I just need to prove myself. My official goal for Alexandria is to run somewhere in the 1550s, because it's undoubtedly a hard course. Now that I've finally showed myself I can reach a goal, it's time to run on a faster course.
The course was a touch short, so on paper, I'm a 15-25 runner, and now I just want to prove it for real. This season, you've run 16-48 for the 5K so far. How does that performance stack up against your end of the season goal, and what does that mean for you today? Um, I got my goal. I got at least two seconds off my time. That's good. And now today I have to stay with Brandon. I sucked this season. Not because I didn't put the work in, but because I got so, so sick. There's like three pandemics going on right now, COVID and then influenza, and then there's another respiratory disease. And I think I got all three of them and it took me out for like a month. I ended up running a 17.15 for my PR this season. I'm gonna try to run a little better, but it's just been unfortunate. I just got hit over and over again. My goal at the beginning of the season was to go sub 18, mid 17s. Um, I think I got that goal, but I'm still not happy. I ran a 17.47 um, and I think I can do much better in the last two meets of the season. Well, my goal was to run, I think 18 minutes or less. So 17.39 gets the job done, but the uh, conference meet, which is where I ran that, was a little short by 38 seconds, so I'm hoping maybe I could go sub-18 at an official 5K. Come promulgating up in our furs and our clothes, and, and we fill our churches. We, we think we all lived on Madison Avenue till we come home at night to the same stinking old neighborhood. Our team ended up placing second, which means we'll be going to state for the third year in a row. Owen had a great race running 16.55 and placing 14th overall. Maceo ran his second fastest time ever to be our sixth man, while Max and Aaron ran on JV. Max wasn't feeling it on the day and ran 18.25, while Aaron ran 18.06 and placed 16th overall. As you saw, I placed second in a time of 15.37. I think this puts me in a great spot going into state because we went out in 5.11 meaning both of the last two miles were sub five. As of today, state is in just six days and I've accomplished one goal while failing to reach another. Our team is in great shape to place well, and so am I. I guess now it's just time to show up and show out. What's up guys, and welcome back to the vlog. We just came back from Olive Garden. We're doing our daily deja vu pre-state pre lap. Pre-state lap before we go. We get ready to become dogs tomorrow. Yep. All right, we're gonna go attack them. We're gonna go kill them. We're gonna eat everyone alive. We're gonna eat everyone alive. Remember, 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 this forced me to have to slow down, which led to the runner behind me stepping on my heel and dislodging my shoe. Having never been in this position before, I opted to let it fall off and save time. I stayed strong through the prairie section, but just before mile two, I hit a big gravel stretch that I forgot to factor in when letting my shoe go. The rocks hurt so bad, I was limping as fast as I could as I continued to fall back places. I ended up placing 38th, running 1615.7. Our team placed 9th, which is one spot back from last year and our third best state performance in school history. I also want to give a shout out to Bennett for running 14 spots ahead of his seed, placing 13th. I think this race definitely serves as a learning experience for me, and I'm excited to see what our team can do next week at Nike Cross Regionals, our last race of the season. Alright, this is the last Whitewater vlog. Hey guys, you know, we're heading it's home It's over! Bye. We ran, and we ate, Whoa. and now we're on the bus ride home. We did our last three mile, we took our photos, and... That's it. Did the last we wrapped home. it up. To start our season, guys. We're gonna go crazy this year. You know? 
I'm a little bit this tired. This is just the beginning. I got this is hours. just the beginning. Just the beginning. It says, imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. And they're standing around your bed, angry. You could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. This is really a, a, a notable performance for Matura. I'm still in shock of what I did this past Sunday. I went out quick, but comfortable, yet I could not have predicted I'd come through the mile in 447. I assumed my pace would slow drastically because the two mile mark had been long in the past. So when I came through in 947, reality started to set in. Even so, I could not have predicted I'd run that close to 15, and I think I could have given a bigger push had I known how close I was. That performance ranks me the third fastest Minnesota runner on the day, the top returning Minnesota runner, and the 10th fastest sophomore in the nation. As far as my teammates, Owen ran 1653 to cap off his season, Maceo finished in 1725, Aaron ran 1830, and Max was unable to attend because he got sick shortly before we left for the trip. Overall, they made improvements of 115, 39 seconds, 103, and 147. These were all huge improvements that were achieved through battling illness, as well as shin splints and a hip injury. For Bennett, Brandon, Eli, Maceo, and Aaron, this was their last race of their high school cross-country careers. As stupid as this may sound, I've come to realize that running is like skipping a rock across water. Not every rock is built the same, some smoother and smaller, while some are larger and more jagged. When a rock first begins to skip, it makes huge leaps across the water. However, it soon loses steam and the distance in between skips decreases. It is the smallest skips at the end, however, that make the biggest difference. The times when you think the rock is going to trail off, but it continues on. It's easy to say I'm improving at a slower rate than when I first began, and that I must be trailing off. However, I think the opposite is true. I improved my 5k time by 35 seconds from 7th to 8th, 47 from 8th to 9th, and now 56 from 9th to 10th. In reality, I'm still continuing to improve by larger and larger margins. So you tell me, has the rock even touched the water yet? Ooh. Ooh.